And good morning, everybody. It's time out for Putnam County today here on 94.3 WREB. With us, Mayor Sue Murray of the great town of Greencastle. Good morning. How's it going? <laughs> cold. It is cold, and uh, hopefully by the end of this week we'll start warming oh, up a little bit. I think we're all looking forward to that time. Everybody is pretty much done with winter now. That's I'm what pretty you see. Sure. Anybody yeah. who has the ability to put up a sign says, Old Man Winter, please go home. You know, like, there's even a website now where you can sign a petition to, oh, to be done with winter. Yeah. Okay. So, but speaking of winter, I, everybody's wanting to know, you know, it's been all over the news and everything, uh, how towns and even Indianapolis was hit hard. Um, chemical supplies for the roads are becoming very in short supply right now. Well, it is because it's been so massive throughout right. the Midwest. It's that everybody finds themselves in the same situation. So we order and we try to order generously for the year and we buy through the state buying consortium for right. our, our product, the clear lane that we use. And we are waiting. And we're still within the limits, the parameters that were set for us that we agreed to for the year, but we have to wait extended periods of time to get shipments. And again, it's because everyone's dealing right. with the same issues. So we are golly, back a few weeks ago, started mixing sand with our clear lane, mm -hmm. which really isn't what we would like to be doing because it doesn't do good things to the storm sewers. Right. But in order for us to have the ability to make roads safe when the temperatures are so low, the clear lane doesn't work. You, exactly. you have to come up with a, a way to try and keep people out on the roads if they need to be and have them be there safely. And I know this, you know, the Department of Work, Street Department and everything, they are putting massive amount of time in this one. They're I mean, exhausted. more than we've ever seen in a long while. They are exhausted. When we have a weather situation that's in the forecast, what we do is our commissioner, Brad Phillips, kind of evaluates where we are and typically goes to 12-hour shifts immediately. Right. So these folks have been working 12-hour shifts on a almost relentless time frame since all of this started, and that was back in December. Yeah. So, you know, they do a lot of catch up when they can, but again, what you have is when it warms up a little bit, what you see because of the freeze thaw are potholes. Right, exactly. And then you've got a whole other set of issues to deal with. So and actually the asphalt companies haven't really started opening up yet. Well, somebody, I was at a meeting earlier and someone said they saw a state truck with asphalt in it. Really? Um, just a few days ago and they were trying to do something with the potholes and he said, I can't imagine why they were even bothering because with it being being so cold right. and ice in the potholes, the it's chances not gonna make it. it's not going to make it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. Well, and you know, a lot of people are concerned about the money situation. Mm -hmm. Not only do you, the city spend more money when you, you know, you've got a clear streets, trash service is somewhat suspended, but you know, people can't get to and from work at times. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize the you know, overall economic impact of weather like this. Well, in you're absolutely right. People can't get to work and so they're not getting paychecks that they need and put strains on families. It also has a tremendous effect on our local businesses because mm -hmm. people aren't getting out. So their revenues aren't what they had hoped for even during the winter months. Right. So it really is something that affects all of us, all walks of life. and. We would like it to be over here. I think so. Well, let's move on a little bit. Um, we had a news story uh, earlier about the NDOT. Actually, they had opened some bids, and uh, they had awarded uh, somebody for some reconstruction work on Indiana Street. Indiana Street. That bid letting, actually, it's still in process. Really? The low bidder was a corporation called Reith Riley mm -hmm. that we've worked with before. They were actually, they came, their bid came in almost $500,000 underneath the engineer's estimate, which good. never, never happens. And you're right, it's good. Exactly. So they're still working on their contract because actually the construction company has a contract with the Department of Transportation. Okay. And then the city has a contract with the firm who's going to do the inspection on the project as it goes along. Okay. So, um, we're waiting on the state contract. As soon as that's settled, then we'll have what they call a pre-construction meeting. So people can get together, the utilities could get together, we can all talk about what needs to happen and what are the issues and concerns for the businesses along the way, sure. for us, for the fire department, for the post office. 
because it is going to be a major road reconstruction project, not just an asphalt overlay by any means. Okay. Well, it sounds pretty good. You know, it's nice to get all this bidding and stuff done here again in the bad winter months. So as soon as that weather breaks, we can take loose and start construction. Right, and I think we all speculate that that's probably why our bid came in in such a favorable right. way because it they don't know what the summer is going to bring in their regular construction season. So they're kind of prospecting for early early opportunities. And we kind of like that. It eases our pain. Absolutely. Pain a <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about. Uh, an issue that's uh, kind of coming up as far as the state, that's the business personal property tax. I have heard a lot of mayors come out very much against this, um, which we understand because it affects the local budget here, cities and counties and everything. The governor has said today that he's not going to jeopardize local budgets. What's your take on that? Because if you take away money, it's got to come from somewhere to be made up. Right, and so far, neither the proposal in the House or the Senate does anything in terms of what are we going to do to get that money back to cities and towns and schools. Right. are also dramatically affected. They, um, there has been released today, and it's interesting, the conversation that's happening, that the business personal property tax is such a critical issue to the future of communities sure. and our ability to provide services and the ability for the schools to educate and as an independent organization, Apolitical, came in and evaluated what it would mean. They are contending that for each one of us as personal property owners, it could mean on average in the state about a 7.6, 7.9% increase in our personal property wow. taxes. But the problem we have, and you're well aware of that, is that we have property tax caps right. in the Constitution. So what will happen is that that'll work for a while, but it's going to shift the burden on to taxpayers, onto all of our taxpayers, and eventually it's going to hit that cap. And once it hits the cap, there still are no other revenue streams available. So that's when especially it's going to become critical about how do we fund police and exactly. fire, and how do we clean the streets. So it really is a major, major concern for those of us. And our council at the February, uh, January meeting passed a resolution saying, you know, please don't do it. Because in all honesty, that's about right now, about just over 20% of our budget right. comes from business personal property tax. And for the Greencastle schools, it's about 1% more than that. Wow. So you can't take away a fifth of a budget. Exactly. Now, you know, the governor's saying that we need to do this to encourage more businesses mm -hmm. to come into Indiana. You know, Greencastle, we've had a pretty good average with new businesses coming yeah. before th th we've even talked about this. You know, do you see a way that, you know, the state can actually, you know, get new businesses to come in without giving a break on this business personal property tax? Individual communities can do tax abatement, and we do tax abatement, right. and try to encourage and be as as hospitable as we can from a financial point of view when people expand their businesses, when people bring new businesses. I, I think that we're going to have to come up with a replacement and I think what has happened, and there's been a lot of talk about surrounding states not having the business personal property tax, but those states have found ways to directly compensate right. cities and towns and schools. There's again nothing in place that we're hearing from the legislature right now to make up that deficit and difference. And I think it's also important, it, it, at the end of the day, it's about where is a business locating is based on the location of the community, the right. needs of that business, the workforce. And it's not going to matter what we do with our taxes right. if we don't have a workforce that's adequately trained. And if you start cutting into the school budgets, again by a fifth, you're having a dramatic impact on what schools can do, and they're a critical piece right. in that qualified workforce. And you know, we're really lucky here in this community that we have such a great workforce when companies do move in. Not a lot of training, people get can get hired right away. And we've been very, very blessed with having different companies come in. We have been, and we've been very, very fortunate also to have Ivy Tech here. That's right. Because they do an awful lot of very um, job-specific training for our industries that are here. And that is a tremendous asset that we have. Well, we have a uh, city council meeting coming up tonight. Yes, city council we got a uh, preview of that city council meeting. Right, we're going to um, actually do a lot with pre-treatment kind of sounds. You know, a lot okay. of a, a lot of wastewater issues coming up tonight. But basically, it's how we protect our wastewater system and 
what people put into our system and how we can keep it clean. And so, you know, we'll talk again about um, grease traps in restaurants and in fraternities and sororities. We'll talk about, you know, you can't just pour things right. down the drain and expect it not to have an impact on our plant. So we're going to try and tidy up our ordinance that we've had our pretreatment ordinance before and put some teeth into it. So okay. we'll be talking about that tonight. We're going to do a second reading on a fair housing ordinance. Um, and then we're going to be talking again about budget. As you know, the city had some budgetary issues because right. of filing um, mistakes that were made in the fall. So we're going to begin conversation on how we're going to rectify those and, again, keep us all in business and keep providing services. Exactly. Well, I want to remind folks that, uh, of course, the meetings at City Hall are always open to the public. 7 o'clock, the second Tuesday of the month. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, anything else you'd like to add today? Well, I think we've hit the big ones. Yeah. I, I, I do. I do. I, I think it's just kind of interesting. Derek Thomas from Channel 6 News called right. on Tuesday afternoon, and he said, we'd like to come to Greencastle and watch the storm. And it was like, okay, why? <laughs> you know? um, but they did come, and they, they spent all evening in Greencastle, and I'm not sure they ever got back to Indianapolis that night watching the storm. But I again, I think as I look at that, how very proud I am of our folks oh, who yeah. get out and continue to provide services to clean those roads. The police protection is there. The fire department responds. And I think as a, as a citizen myself, let alone as the mayor, I'm exceptionally proud of the people who work for the city. And evenings like that, again, oh, just yeah. show us how fortunate we are. And, and I think our friends from Channel 6 News realize that too. And speaking of which, real quickly, I just want to touch on a little bit. Um, you know, a few weeks ago we had a fire up north of the church. And, uh, you know, the fire department sometimes don't get enough credit. Oh. But these guys were out below zero weather trying to fight this fire. And police, too. The law enforcement in Putnam County, Greencastle, uh, Tom Sutherland's chief, they do a remarkable job of Amazing. making sure everybody's safe. And, uh, you know, they still have time to do community work outside of their work service. So, you know, again, real big thank you to those people. Absolutely. People. We couldn't do it without them. And, you know, our ability to all work together, mm -hmm. regardless of where the law enforcement agency is housed, where the fire department ends up putting their trucks at night, they work seamlessly together and they work so very well. I think, again, we as a community at large should be very proud. All right. Well, Sue, we'll let you get back to uh, your business of running this city. We appreciate you spending time with us. Don't forget, if you're a nonprofit group or a community organization, you'd like some free airtime, you too can be a part of Putnam County today. Just give us a call at 653-9717.